the Lord. Aren't you glad he sets you free? Who the Son sets free, the Bible says, is free indeed. Amen. We're going to go ahead and change our order of service and take up our offering. Amen. Brother John, would you help us with offering tonight? Thank you, Lord. We just praise you, Lord. Amen. 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 God, we love you. God, we love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just want to take this time to say thank you for everything that you do in our lives. God, I ask you to bless and minister and touch in every need and every life that's represented here. I pray through the riches of your grace as we give to the kingdom of God that you'd move in each and every life and meet their needs. And I'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. There is nothing that I need that he won't supply. Anybody believe? Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Do we have any special tonight? All right. If you have your Bible, turn with me tonight. I'm going to go to Genesis. Hallelujah. The 28th chapter. Amen. Genesis 28. I'm going to get down here with you. Thank you, Lord. God's good, his mercy endureth forever. I uh, started talking about uh, this particular subject that I'm fixing to endeavor to talk to you about here. Uh, I started talking about it, but I want to kind of take it a little farther tonight. Amen. This is going to be the uh, the uh, life of Jacob. Amen. You Let's uh, go ahead and read a couple of scriptures and then we'll uh, pray. Uh, Genesis 28 chapter, verse number 10 is where I'm going to go. Amen. Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and out of them for his pillow and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep and he dreamed and behold a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to the heaven and behold the angels of God ascended and descended on it and behold the Lord stood above it and said I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the 
and the God of Isaac, and, and excuse me, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest it, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. We're asking you to help us tonight to minister this flock and feed them and strengthen them by your riches of your grace and power. And I'll give you the thanks for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, brother. Yeah, that's fine. Amen. So, so we're talking uh, about uh, Jacob tonight, and I'm going to kind of go back up and kind of review what we had talked about. Uh, Jacob, Jacob has uh, just received the blessings from his father, Isaac. Amen. And, you know, the part that happened with Esau, Esau should have got it because Esau was actually the one that uh, was uh, considered the firstborn. And when, as being the firstborn, he is supposed to inherit the blessing. You know, you know the story through the Bible that he basically got hungry one time and come in and and I like to call it pot, but uh, pot of beans. But uh, he called them lentils and stuff. And he had, he had some pottage there. And Esau said, "I'm hungry. Give me something to eat, or lest I die." And and so he, Jacob said, "Well, sell. Give me your birthright." And I will give you something to eat. And he said, what good is my birthright if I die, right? And so so he, he sold his birthright that day and gave his rights to Jacob, amen, over a deal of pottage. It's amazing. We, we don't... We think that when we read that story, sometimes we're thinking that 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 that's kind of crazy. Why did that go on and stuff? But it's much more serious than we we venture to see. Even God, throughout Scripture, talks about Esau selling his birthright. Jacob, I love Esau. I hated different ones like that. It wasn't so much that God hated him in the sense that I just don't like him as a person. But Esau took his rights and his promises promises and his blessings and everything and just gave it away. Amen. He just let it go. You know, we've got to be careful because you and I a lot of times have rights to the things of God, and we've got to be sure to pursue the things that God has for our life. But but to get into our lesson today, Esau sold his birthright, and when it come down for him to be blessed, he got he didn't get blessed with the with the, with the blessing of the firstborn son. Jacob ended up getting that, and when he left that place, his dad told him, "I want you to go back to your mother's uh, brother's house. I want you to find your wife, and may the blessings of God and Abraham be upon you." And so he, he left, and when he left, the first place that he comes to is this place. And I, and I talked about it. He, uh, the sun sets right there. He's coming to a point. It's fixing to be night. He comes to this place, and the Bible said it was a set place. I want you to notice it. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set, okay? Amen. It's amazing. He get to this one place. It happens to be exact place he needs to be. I want to say to you as a believer, the Bible says the steps of a righteous man, righteous woman are arranged or ordered by God. You got to, you got to understand that God arranges steps in your life. The problem, the problem with steps that I think I think God knows exactly what he's doing. Don't get me wrong, but but I think one of the problems for us is, is we don't understand God just gives us steps. God don't give you the whole picture. God don't do uh, give you the whole layout of everything and tell you, okay, this is what's going to happen on this day. This is what's going to happen on this day. This is what's going to happen on this time in your life. You're going to struggle right here, but just know I'm with you. And, and if you'll keep walking and keep hanging on to me, it'll, it'll work out in your life. But the, the, the problem is God don't fill in the details. God, God, here he is. Jacob is assumingly obeying his dad, going to 
his uh, mom's brother's house, try to find him a wife. He knows he's got to make a living. He knows he's got to have a job. He knows all this stuff's got to happen for him. And he's on a journey. When he starts on this journey, he winds up at this certain place, and there he decides to to, uh, lay down and rest for that night. And it's amazing because the, the picture that God paints here is so awesome and wonderful. We get to see Jacob's life from here. Jacob is walking out his life. And we get to view from a camcorder his life and what's going on. And so God is taking his life and God is arranging his steps and putting him at a certain place at a certain time so that God can manifest himself unto him and start fulfilling promises in his life. You, you've got to know that God put, has steps arranged in your life. You've got to learn. That's why, that's why it's so crucial for you and I to pray and seek the face of God and go after the things of God because it's not that God won't do his part, but are you going to be ready when he's ready to do things in your life? Transition that's got to take place. Next step that's got to take place. Are you ready to go where God God wants you to go when it's time to go because you can do like Esau and sell your birthright off and sell your blessings off and sell all them things off because you don't care about what God has ordained for you. You just care about meeting your personal needs. Hey, hey. And so, so God is wanting to take it deeper with Jacob, and you and I get to see the picture that God's painting through his life. How many pictures is God painting through your life? How many things is God doing through your life that you don't even realize when you're taking a step? That's why, that's why again, I say to you, our prayer life is not just, oh, well, I want to do what Pastor Horn told me I need to pray or Pastor Miles had told us we need to pray or, or somebody like that. I'm here to tell you that there is a guidance that you need in the directions of your life and you need to be able to take the right step at the right time and you need to be able to hear what God is saying. Jacob is walking, gets to a certain place, and he... He takes the stones that are right there and he makes them for a pillar. (laughs) Woo! Isn't it amazing that he takes stones, which we get to look and see his life, and we go back over here in the New Covenant under the Apostle Peter, and he said that the church is called Living Stones, right? Amen. And so he took those living stones and he put them together and made a pillow. And I know I, I've said this before, but I want you to understand that it's amazing how God is arranging and setting him up for the blessing that he has. He rested his head on the living stones. What people are trying to do today and what people we need to get back to being in the church is we need to be stones, places, foundation in which people can come and rest their self in the presence of God. Do you hear me? So that they can experience a manifestation of what God is doing. He's ascending and descending, which we find out later, and he's given a message unto him, and that message is going to guide him through the portions of his life. Do you hear me? God speaks a word into us. As I said this morning, heaviness Maketh a, may, a heaviness of the heart, maketh a man stoop, but a good word maketh him glad. What's going to turn around Jacob's life is that a good word from God is speaking to him and moving him on to the plan that God has for his life. He thinks he's just going there. God's got a plan for him, and he does not figure that out until he has an open revelation through his relationship of talking back and forth to God. That night when he's dreaming a dream, he sees a ladder ascending, angels ascending and descending. God's standing at the top of the ladder and said, 
I am the God of your Abraham, your father, right? I am, I am the God of Isaac, which is your father. Actually, Abraham was his grandfather. And then it goes on to say, he dreamed, behold, letter, I'm going to read it to you. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land wherein thou liest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed. Amen. So he is there, and now he's got a promise of God upon his life. Has God ever spoke to you about things? Has God ever gave a revelation to you about things that he wants to do in your life? You felt promises. You felt God speaking into your life, telling you what to do. Some, some, sometimes it can be uh, uh, something simple, but, but to, it don't matter what we think is simple. The reality is it's a promise that's great to us, right? Amen. When God told me he'd save my whole family, it was a promise that meant everything to me, right? Amen. And so God, God is trying to get us to recognize here Jacob is he is a he is a conduit that God is going to use to take and bring about the blessings that we are getting today do you hear me so he said can you imagine he laid down at that particular instance that particular place and he was setting up for a blessing that God is going to take down through the generations of time and God God does things in our life that way and that's one of the things I wanted to point out to you today. He has taken a step. He has a dream. He sees it. He hears the word of God into his life. And after, when he wakes up, he said, whoa, this surely is a, is a what do you, how do he say it? I like what he said. Let me read it to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jacob awaked out of sleep. Verse number 16, and said, surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. Amen. How many times have we took a step and didn't know God really helped us make a step? How many times have we got to where we're at and realize, woke up and realized at that moment that God is really directing our path? Has anybody... Has anybody ever look, saw something happen in your life, and then when you get kind of back and you're looking at it, you think, wow, God worked that out in my situation, in my life, and blessed me, and I didn't even realize God was doing anything right there. Because the reality is that God's got us covered, but then notice his relationship. Jacob didn't freak out in the dream and say, who, who are you? You know what he said? He knew he's the Lord. He knew that he's getting revelation. So ladies and gentlemen, that tells me he has a relationship with God. And because of that relationship, he's open to receive the manifestation and the revelation that God has for his life. And because of that, he accepted the promise of God that his seed would be blessed and that all families of the earth would be blessed because of that. I'm going to tell you, if you've never seen God before and he just starts speaking to you like that, you may say, who, who are you? What's going on? But when he's laying there, he has a relationship to him. He's open to him. And we see the picture that even laid his head upon the rock. <laughs> Woo! Amen. He had a sure foundation. He had a relationship with God. And because of that, he received manifestation from God. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit wants to do some manifestation in your life, but you got to rest your head upon the rock of Jesus Christ. Do you hear me? I mean, he wants to do things and speak into your life, but you and I have got to be ready to hear God. Hey. Amen. I, I don't just come here so I can just say I've seen y'all. You know, honestly, I like seeing y'all. Be honest with you. I like being around you. Amen. I like you. I love you. But, but I'm going to tell you, I didn't just come here to be seen. 
I didn't come here just to see somebody. What I come here to do is hear word from God, right? I need that word, whether it come through the music, whether it come through the preaching, whether it come through what avenue that God wants you. People can prophesy. I believe in prophesying. Do you hear me? Amen. I believe in the flow and the gifts of the Spirit. Whatever manifestation the Holy Ghost wants to do, I want to be willing to hear it and say, yes, Lord, to your will and to your way. Yes, Lord, I will trust you and obey. Amen. When your Spirit speaks to me, With my whole heart, like Jacob, I will agree. Speak to me, Lord. Speak to me, Lord. Amen. Bible said the word of God became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. You've got to behold the word of God. You've got to embrace the word of God. You've got to say yes to his will and to his way. That's what makes everything change, and he's sleeping right there, look it up, embrace God's promise, and said yes to your will and to your way. Amen. He got up from that place and said, this is a dreadful place. What he meant was, I respect this place. Amen. I reverence this place. Amen. Anytime you have the presence of God moving in a special place like that in your life, it is a respectful place. God said, them rocks, that place, that pillar he made, notice later, he took oil and poured on them rocks. You know what made that place separated, sanctified, anointed by God? is the fact that the Holy Ghost was upon those living stones. What makes you and I, the church, Church of the living God is not just because we say we're a part of the church, but because we have a relationship and the Holy Ghost is upon our lives. Woo! Hallelujah! I'm going to get happy with y'all do or not. Amen. So, so God said here that he is laying there, and he said, I was afraid, verse 17, and said, how dreadful is this place? He's respecting the place. This is none other but what? The house of God. They call that place Bethel. Amen. Beth, a place of habitation. El means Jehovah, right? Amen. It's a place, a house of God's habitation. Where does God live? He lives inside of us, not a building. He lives inside of us. We are the Bethel of today as we are the church of the living God. And when the Bible says when two or three are gathered together in his name, he said, I'm right in the midst. You know why? Because we're a habitation of God built by the Spirit of God. We are God's spiritual house and this is why when you and I get together the power falls when you and I really pray in the name of Jesus the power will fall when you and I have that together the power will fall because ladies and gentlemen the fact is is that we're God's spiritual house and that's where the power is Notice, why Why did he take oil and anoint them rock? Why is it needful? That's just a pillar. No, it wasn't just a pillow. To him, it was a pillar, a foundation. It means it's anointed, sanctified, consecrated place, and this is the house of God, he said. Amen, amen. It's important. It's important. Go to verse 18. Jacob rose up early. In the morning, and took the stone, had put to his for his pillars, set it up for a pillar, and he poured oil upon the top of it. He anointed it. Amen. First John, the fourth chapter, first epistle, John fourth chapter says, We have an anointing. I believe it's second chapter, maybe fourth. Amen. It says, We have an anointing of God. You and I are anointed by God. What makes us a spiritual house is our habitation of God by his spirit. Amen. When we come together and the Holy Ghost is in this place, we are the house of God. Amen. It don't matter if it's two or three or 203, right? It still means that we get together as his house and we are the church. If I do it in the front parking lot, we're the church out there. If I do it at Walmart, we're the church out there. Do you hear me? 
with the power of God is upon us through the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and we can do things wherever we are. Amen? We shouldn't be ashamed of this. We should embrace it. Amen? I don't want to embarrass anybody. I'm not embarrassing anybody when God comes down and touches them and blesses them and heals them and does miracles in their life. That's not something to be ashamed of. That's something to praise God for. Amen? Hallelujah. And sometimes I believe we don't see miracles because we don't care a step out in faith and do stuff. Amen. Quit, quit. We worry about offending people. What we need to be worrying about, are we offending God? Amen. For not doing what he said for us to do. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. I, I understand that this COVID's a bad thing, but I'm here to tell you, my friend, that God is bigger than COVID-19. I believe that uh, I'm tell you, I understand being six foot distant. I, I've obeyed that. I've done everything I need to do. But I'm here to tell you, I refuse to be scared because of COVID-19. What I want to do is say, you know what? Jesus, I put my hand, my life in your hands. Amen. If God decides to take me home by COVID-19, I'm going home. Do you hear me? But if he don't, I'm going to keep marching on, Brother Roy. Amen. I'm sorry for all those that died. I hate it. I've been praying for our country because of it. But I am not going to let the media or anybody scare me to death over COVID-19. God didn't give me a spirit of fear. He gave me a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Jacob said, he anointed that. He called this place the house of God, and this is Bethel. Amen. God's place. And so he he went and Jacob vowed a vow. Now when it, now now think about this. He he built up a pillar with the rocks that he laid his hand on, and he anointed that pillar with oil, and he called that place Bethel, the house of God. This was a place of his revelation. And the Bible, and then it goes on verse number 20, and I love this. Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me the bread to eat and raiment to put on. Notice what he's saying. He's saying, Lord, I'm entering into a relationship with you. I'm going to put my life in your hands. I'm going to lose my life, and I'm giving myself to you. I need you to take care of me. Jacob vowed a vow, saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on. Notice what he's saying. Amen. I need you. I'm trusting you with my life. Verse number 21. Let's go there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that I come again to my father's house in peace. Notice what he's saying. Amen. Where's his father's house? In the land of Canaan, in the promised land, into the land that God's going to give the children of Israel. He's coming back to the place of promise. I need you, God, to make sure I get back here. My God, have you ever found your life going in some certain areas and you have to say, God, get me back here. Amen. Hallelujah. Because God's got a plan. Yes, it was God's will for him to go over there because Jacob went over to Laban's house and he learned some valuable lessons there that I want to talk about. But he learned some lessons there that he needed to know in his relationship to God. Can I tell you that your walk with God takes a process sometimes. Amen. God's got to teach you things. God's got to carry you through things so that he can do the things he wants to do in your life. Woo. Isn't it amazing? In every area of life, just about, we have to, we have to teach people if we're going to let them. I know, I know electrical trade, if you're going to call somebody, let somebody work and mess electricity and different things and that, depending on what you deal with mostly, depends on the level of training that you need, right? And so, 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 so what happens is you train people so that when they actually do work with electricity, if they have to work with it hot, that they, they, they do not 
get themselves shocked. I'll just put it that way. Amen. Anything in life, if you're gonna if you're gonna let a child start driving a car, you wait till they get to a certain age because you feel like that is a, a certain level of maturity that now they may can handle the responsibility of driving a car. And so you don't just throw them the keys because you hadn't taught them how to drive a car. They got to that one level, but now you got to teach them. And we used to have driver's ed in my school. You was part of our classes and they taught you how to drive, taught you safe driving, taught all the things that you need to do. And then they didn't just leave you there. Now they went out and put you in a car and they had a, somebody sitting right there had a break over there amen and God bless them for putting up with us but uh, they they took you down the road they told you how to do it you got you how to turn how to put your blinker on do all that stuff and they taught you how to drive amen God sometimes had, can't just throw us the keys to the car and let us go where we want to go or do what we want to go because we'd never get there we'd have a wreck right so God's got to take us through process and show us when you come up to a left turn, you got to turn on your blinker, right? When you, you don't just come up there and push it to the floor and just throw it to the left and hope you make it, right? You got to go there. You got to slow down. You got to pay attention to people around because when you're making a left turn, you got to deal with certain obstacles and different things. So be careful when you do that. And here's what you need to do. If you don't learn that stuff, you're liable to get hit. You're liable to hit somebody else. You're liable to do whatever. It takes a responsibility. God's got to teach us these things. If, we, if he don't teach us, we'll never walk into the fulfillment of his blessing. Now that somebody taught me to drive and somebody taught me how to do something, I benefit from the vehicle rather than it causing me heartache and pain. Hey, hey. And, and I don't think a lot of Christians, they, we, want, we want the car before we learn how to mess with it. Woo, God, give me the power. I want to do the great things for you. If God give it to you, you'd wreck everything. So God's got to teach you. God's got to let you deal with unforgiveness. He's got to let you deal with all kinds of things. He's got to let you deal with people that are hateful and ugly and different things. And then he's got to let you deal with nice, loving, kind people. And he lets you do a mixture so you learn to love everybody. <laughs> well, y'all got quiet on that one. Good preaching, Brother Horn. Thank you for that. Hallelujah. He lets you get in situations that uh, for, uh, for unforgiveness is right there. He lets you get there because he, he needs to teach you how to walk through it. He's got to teach you what it is to understand for him. And when you reject his son and when you go through these things and you say no to the things of God and see you see how it hurts when Jesus died on the cross. He didn't die sitting there saying, Whoa, this is a good thing. He died of a broken heart. Amen. Because mankind chose the things they want instead of the things of God and the promises of God. Adam wanted you eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Everything in that garden was yours. And you had to go to that one tree, one tree out of all the trees that were there. Why did you have to go there? Why did you let the enemy make you focus on what don't matter? Hey? Why do you let it happen? Why would you let it happen? God, God has to take you through the process to get you to the point that you understand things. And then, and then when he matures you enough, he, you can, he can give you stuff. Amen. That's, do you notice the Bible says don't give a, a novice a position because what you do is you cause them to get into the pride of Satan? Amen. Isn't that what happens to a lot of people? We get we get a position or we see something happen and we get overwhelmed with pride. Amen. We need to learn and understand. Usually when God gives you something, you don't want you don't want that particular thing because you say you come in his presence and you come to a point that you sit there and say, I don't deserve this. I don't belong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't deserve this. And here, God, I just want to give you myself whatever you want me to do. But if you got somebody else, let them have it. Do you hear me? Because I'm here to tell you, usually when God chooses you, you're ready. 
Amen? You ready to start on that journey? And here Jacob is ready. God's fixing to take him through promise. He's going to let the world, basically, even his own loved ones, cheat him, but he's going to watch God take all the things the enemy does, all the things the world does, and he's going to watch him turn it around for his life because he's going to stay faithful to God. God's going to open his teaching, open his mind, and make him understand what he can do so that he can be blessed. But what happens to us many times as Christians, we get complacent. Does anybody know what complacent is? Amen. I read, I read this. I want to read this to you. Complacency. I love it. It was talking about a relationship. Complacency is a huge problem in relationships. Nowadays, most people don't see it because it disguises itself in the form of being content or comfortable. Okay? And it said you're only doing enough to maintain what you have with your partner and you're not pushing yourself or your relationship to come to become better or stronger. Woo! You remember that old joke? Listen, I've been sitting by this woman for all these years. She knows I love her. If that changed, I'll tell her. Amen. And what it is is that 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 content that contentness that comfortability that we come into, that we just take things for granted, that complacency. We, if we can do that with one another and do that even with our spouses, how much more can we do that with God sometimes? We don't try to go better. We don't try to go stronger in our relationship. We get satisfied with the way it is and become content with it and don't take it to the next level. Well, I'm here to tell you, you're God is a big God, and he's got a lot of things for you. It's amazing when Jacob, and I'll show you the words, when Jacob left uh, where he was at with Abraham, and he was going to Laban's house in uh, Syrian, he was leaving from one place, a field, and going to a plateau. So literally, Jacob was going up higher. <laughs> Woo! Amen. The problem with plateaus is you can get plateaued out. Amen. And if you'll notice, he went there seven to 14 years, and I'm fixing to quit. He went there, he went there seven years, served for uh, Rachel. He ended up getting Leah. He served seven more years for Rachel. And then, and then he's trying to leave again. And his, uh, his brother-in-law basically said, no, I want you to hear, take this. I've been blessed by you being here. He ends up staying longer, and he just gets hung up in this plateau. But finally God speaks into his life and says, it's time to go back where I called you unto. It's time to go to that place. And so he did all these things. Yes, God blessed him. Yes, God touched him. But the promise is about to come. The victory is about to come. Things that I want to do in your life are about to come. You think you're Jacob, but you're really Israel. You're going to have to leave that plateau so you can go to this place, and you're going to have to wrestle with an the, I believe it to be the Lord, amen. Wrestle with the Lord, and you're going to have something happen in your life that you're going to know that you had an interaction with God like you've never had before, amen. And you are going to change from being Jacob to Israel, and you are going to be a prince and have power with God. But that's going to take you learning to trust God. Hey? Amen. Don't, don't curse. I'm quitting. Don't curse your blessing. Just because things ain't going right, always right here, even in the midst of things going wrong, God's still blessing you, Jacob. 
God's still taking care of you. Yeah, I sure have to earn 11 every time. He changed his wages, I think, was it three times? Changed his wages three times so he could try to get the best. And every time he changed it, God would turn the circle again. And here it go. Everything work out for Jacob. Everything will work out for Jacob. Everything work out. He was sweating. He was working. It was hard. It seemed like, why in the world am I having to do this? But every time God blessed Jacob and he left there with wealth, he left there with family, he left there with a big family, amen, amen, and he left with all that. God blessed Jacob and God did exactly what he said he would do, amen, hallelujah. So I want to finish with this. Don't let complacency happen. Don't be satisfied with where you're at. Go deeper. Amen. Go deeper. Build a stronger relationship with God. Build a stronger relationship with your spouse. Build a stronger relationship with your friends. Build a stronger relationship. Go deeper. Go deeper. Make it better. Amen. Can I make myself better? What can I do to make myself better? Everybody's standing to your feet. Y'all are all sweating. Y'all got me all worried. Amen. Wonder if somebody turned the air off on me. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. I work hard to keep this thing cooled down. Hallelujah. God, God's got a plan for you. But Jacob teaches us. God wrote this down for our learning. God teaches us if you're going to go anywhere, you've got to, you cannot get complacent. You've got to keep going after trust in God. Amen. And God will turn things around in your life. Amen. Amen. And I just want to say this as I finish. If we're, if we're not careful, life is so general, it happens, everything seems it's the same way every day, that we'll allow that to dictate to us, I don't think God's doing anything. Amen? But I don't, I don't go, we cannot go by the dictations of things that are happening around us because we don't live by sight, we live by faith. Amen. If you don't go by faith, you, this down here is always going to give you a false connotation of the reality that God has for your life. Amen. Well, are we going to believe the lie or are we going to believe the promise? Are we going to believe the lie or are we going to believe the promise? My loved one's acting crazy. I don't know if they'll ever get saved. God told me he'd save them. What am I going to believe? I'm going to believe the lie or I'm going to believe the promise? I believe the promise says God will save them. Amen? I don't care if they're acting like a jerk. I don't care if they're getting high. I don't care if all that's happening. I hate that it's happening in their life. But God, you said you'd save them. I'm going to believe you anyway. Amen? I believe God. I trust him. Enemies trying all kinds of things, changing it up. One minute he's getting drunk. One minute he's getting high. One minute he's promiscuous. One minute this is happening, this is happening. Changing it up, changing it up. It don't matter what you change it up. Amen. God said he'd save him. And if God said he'd save him, that's what I got to believe. Amen. She sung the song. I believe. I believe. I believe. Can God bring families in? Absolutely. God bring children in? Absolutely. Can God bring young people in? I still believe it. Hallelujah. I will not let the things around me dictate to me what things are. I live by faith. Hey. My God, who am I talking to? I feel you. I feel you. God's got a plan for you. You are men for more. Lift your hands and just love him. Father, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for the promises that you spoke into our lives. I want to thank you for the revelation and manifestation that you spoke into our hearts, oh God. Amen. That regardless, oh, I'm walking through this journey and the, and the land may be dry and the situation may be dry and it may be hot and it seems like I'm not getting anywhere. The reality is,
is I don't live by what I see and what I feel. I live by faith. And the promise of God is yea and amen. And if God said it, that settles it. Amen. I worship you. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. I love you. Amen. I may have heaviness. I may be depressed. But when I get a good word from God, it makes my heart glad. You know why it makes me glad? Because I live by faith. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word, thy word, thy word, thy word. I live by thy word. Amen. I live by thy word. I live by thy word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Father, I just thank you for what you're doing in this place. God, we bless you. We adore you. We magnify you. We just pray over everybody. Asking you right now, God, as you minister to the needs of their lives, that you help us all not to be complacent not to get in what we call a comfort zone, not to get into a place that we're content with where we're at, but help us to better and grow stronger in our relationships so that we can do as Jacob did and walk and though we never think we're just Jacob, we'll finally come to that place that we realize we're princes, we're priests, we're kings of God. Amen. Amen. Father, touch and minister, and I'll give you the praise for that. There may be people under the sound of my voice, there may be people on Facebook that needs prayer. I'm asking you right now to touch them through the riches of your grace. Minister them, strengthen them, uplift them, bless them, and I'll give you the praise. Amen. I give you the praise. I give you the praise. And I thank you for everything that you do in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. We love you.